Hey guys, so we're at my uh, P1S printer and I want to go ahead and install my Panda Claw um, from Big Tree Tech extruder in here. So I figured I'd just film it and uh, you guys can watch. So first we'll go ahead and pull the top off here. And we'll go ahead and unplug the back front plate. And then we'll go ahead and unplug this hot end. Go ahead and take it all out. Which, uh, for any of you that have a bamboo printer, know that it's really not uh, too hard to work on. Now my printer has the hardened extruder gear set in there already that I put in when I purchased the unit. I just bought it uh, and added the hardened gears in there. Uh, of course Big Tree Tech would come along and you know make something better <laughs> this is pretty I just got the Panda Revo hot end on it with the uh, Diamondback nozzle uh, it's it's about as upgraded as you can make a P1S and then we'll just set our actually I'll go ahead and Take that plastic off of that nozzle. Uh, if you never used it, by the way, the slice engineering, nothing will focus. It's like a plastic repellent. Works really good to keep the plastic off the Revo nozzles. Just in case you're interested. So now we want to um, go ahead in here and get the extruder unit out um, take me a minute to remember how I did that but if memory serves me it was This one, this one, and I think that one that came out. It's been a minute since I actually, I mean, I have had this printer since, I think I got this thing in April or May. It takes me a minute to remember how things actually go on this so I'm going to take this hardened gear set out and I'll save it um, but I probably will never need it and that Panda Claw is actually a fairly reasonable price I think it was $19 per per one, one for the P1S and one for the A1 Mini. So it's a very fair price. Yeah, it was a fair price. And now that I'm thinking about it, I remember the other thing I'm missing. Yeah, want to take a disc. And loosen it. Not loose enough yet. There we go. And 
take that and just slide it down. If while you're in there, now's a great time to change your cutter blade if need be. Um, since I'm in there, I'll probably go ahead and change it. I've got so many of these things. Doesn't have any nicks or anything. Yeah, it does have a couple little nicks. And of course, it's not going to focus. But we'll go ahead and we'll get a new cutter blade real quick. Uh, I have so much stuff for these printers, it's ridiculous. Um, you should probably keep some on hand too. things. Alright, here's one. I think I buy these like nine or ten at a time. Just it's something so stupid to go have an issue with and not have on hand. And since it's been several months and I know I've ran at least three or four spools of filament in there, we'll go ahead and put the new new unit in there while wow, we're in here and that's it for that and we'll get rid of that old one then we'll go ahead and we got to take this PPT tube off as well which I forgot to do so shame on me Got to try to do it. Oh, there's no screws in it. Take the PF, the PTF2 off first. If you're doing this, just FYI, especially on a camera. All right, I'm gonna have to move the camera for a bit. The door's in the way. I can't push down. All right. There we go. Bring y'all back in the thing here. Forgot to take that tube off. Make sure you disconnect the electrical connection on the top of the board. And that's what your extruder essentially looks like. Um, and we're going to replace what's actually inside of this. So I'm going to go ahead and I'll bring everything on this little workbench area here. Let me raise y'all up some. Bench with me, and we'll go ahead and get out the extruder. And apparently, it comes with some grease, some other stuff. We'll go ahead and pull it out. Really nice, solid extruder gears here. Okay, good, solid chunk. And honestly, I'll be 100% transparent. I have no idea where they're going to want us to lube this thing. So we'll go ahead and pull out our phone. Scan the QR. And we'll see what they tell us where they want us to put lubricant on there. Of course, you see on there. Tells you a little bit about it. And of course it gives you the, the guide to you know take everything off and whatnot. And we're already through all that and got all that out. So then 
Apparently you could have left the hot yeah, could have left the hot end on there, but whatever, it's two screws. Um and we want to take off these four screws right here in the back. So let's go ahead and take it off. I have no idea if this is the right size, but it looks like it. It's crazy how you forget how how quick you forget when you take don't take something apart for for a while how it goes together. And that is a hardened steel gear with like a like a diamond like coating on the gear as well and it should probably I, I mean it would be years before it would ever need replaced so I just don't know where they really want us to grease it that's why I wanted to pull up the wiki because I've never actually put, you know, watched anyone do this. I just, I've had them for a while and ain't had the opportunity. So there's your back cover. I just leave my screws sitting in there and set the cover down over here. And then you're left with what's inside on your extruder. And there's a tensioner screw over here on the side. You're going to want to loosen that up to take the tension off the extruder the pressure off the extruder. You can just take it back. It's coming back to me now. You want to bring that all the way back out till you have a loose no pressure on that spring. Believe it or not that spring is under a lot of tension. No, it's not. So now we got it all backed out. And the rest is fairly self-explanatory, but I do want to see where they want this grease at. So, and looking at it, just so I'll show you on this. So, they want you to put the grease on this gear, these teeth here, and this here. And then on this little tip, they want you to put grease too, and they don't want any grease in around this, the filament area on there. And on this unit, they want you to put grease right there. And this thing is absolutely killing me with the focus. But you want to put it on the gear, the drive gears of the unit, not the filament gear. And I apologize that it's not. So grease here, not here. Um... And they, they stress that um, yeah, they stress. Do not get any grease on the the uh, filament teeth. If you do, you have to wash it with soap and water and 
basically start all over again. So no grease on the gear. Uh, since we're going to deal with grease and I don't want grease all over me, I'm going to get some gloves. Gotta grab some latex gloves here and put these bad boys on cuz it does say the grease can cause eye irritation, which you know I don't want. And it don't necessarily want to have grease all over me. So now that we're into there, we'll go ahead and we'll cut our little grease pack open. And I'm gonna go ahead and push this grease away from the corner as I slice it open here there we go I don't even know what I do with the box so now we have that done and I will go ahead and you can kind of see we'll take out this hardened gear here it just goes face down and then we'll go ahead and we will get our I drop my spring And I drop my bushing thing, which I thought I was going to be able to catch that, but guess not. So down to the floor we go. I fell down the crack of my disc. least it fell and didn't bounce. All right. I call it a little top hat I dropped. It's this little metal piece that uh, goes into the spring. I knew it was going to fall out and I still did it. Um, so be careful of that. Otherwise, it'll be on the floor like I just was. And we'll go ahead and just kind of stick that back up into the plastic casing of that extruder assembly. This is the little plastic one you're taking out, and it's going to be replaced with the beefier metal unit. So now we'll go ahead and we will put grease on the gears. I'm trying to see what's in this thing. Oh, these are going to be bearings. Yeah. They do include bearings in the kit. That's really nice. Um, I mean, I've got bearings for it, so it's not a big deal, but they do include the bearings if you need some bearings. Again, one of those things, since I'm in there, I'll go ahead and replace the bearing, even though it's probably not needed. But we'll go ahead and push it out. Let me get your bearing out. Just push it from this side here. 
and just kind of go around it with circular pressure and push out that bearing which is right here put our new bearing in Sorry, I know you can't see right there. Once you kind of get it flush, just push it back down into that plastic housing. And you'll see that it sits right down in there. You can push it flush. Doesn't take much force. All right, so now you got one bearing out. Then we'll pull up our case here. Flip it over and get your screws out so you don't drop your screws. And there's your other bearing right inside of there. And there it went. And then take your new bearing. Push it down in there. And then in my case, I just put my screws back in. You do however you work. I'm just kind of my methodology in it. All the screws are the same length, so you don't have to worry about anything. And then now we shall put our spring and our top hat back in, like so. And we will set it down there. And then we're going to put our grease onto our gear units. Um, wish they would put this in a tube, but nonetheless, we'll go ahead and we'll get it greased up. And you'll want to put the grease on these gears like so. And after you get the grease on that gear, we will flip it. I'm not going to smear it until I get it all over to prevent grease contaminating other areas. Then we'll put some grease on this gear. So as you can see, we got grease on that gear and we'll take our gloves and we'll just kind of work that grease into the teeth. And I'm going to use uh, my pinky glove and we'll push the grease in on these gears here and then just push it in like so and now we got some grease in that gear set my gear down momentarily I have a little rag right here and I'm gonna wipe my glove off so I don't get grease on anything I don't want grease on and then it said it wants us to put a little grease on the tip of this shaft here so we'll just put a little dab there and we'll Gently just rub it around there. And 
And it shouldn't take a lot of grease on the shaft, just FYI. Um, grease goes a long way. So I got a little bit on the edge there. Try to get just a little bit more. There we go. And I got my grease how I want it. So I'm gonna set this piece right there. Try not to get grease on me. All right, and then we'll duplicate that process on this unit we still will not we'll be very careful not to touch the um extruder gears with this grease or the uh, filament gears and we'll run it around alright I'm going to set this grease out of the way right there and we'll wipe our hands off one more time. That way we can go back, reach in here, and we can actually get some of the excess grease off. We don't need the excess. You want to kind of just push it in those teeth with your glove. And that's all you need. So now our gears are greased and ready to go. So we will gently set this unit back down in there. Like so. The grease is a, it's very, uh, it's a weird texture of grease. FYI. Hold on. Yeah, it's a weird texture grease, so, you know. Now I got everything on there, so then we'll take this unit and Slide it down in there. Alright. I'll get my towel and just clean my hands off again. I don't want this grease on me. This doesn't feel like it's a necessarily a bad grease. I just don't want it on me. And then we'll go ahead and we'll tighten up our extruder unit against there. Again. Putting our tension back on our extruder. And now that I'm getting somewhere, I'm just going to go ahead and hold this here. And we'll just keep on tightening this bad boy down. got it in there now and now that I'm looking at it I see a little spot right there where I missed some grease so I'm gonna just get a little more grease on my fingertip here doesn't have to be a lot just want to make sure you fully coat that gear easier to put grease on this gear anyway right now 
as it's in there. Like I said, you probably won't never have to do much with this unit. It seems pretty uh, stout. There we go. Just want to make sure you got grease in between each each gear tooth, and that'll limit the noise that the metal gears make. All right, then I'll go ahead and take my finger and I rub it along the edge of this gear. I don't want no excess grease running in there. So there we have that. Good. So now we have that. Now we can put our screw, our cover back on. Oh, you know what? I am going to do one thing. Just going to take this here. Little small screwdriver, put a little grease on it. And just smear some grease on this shaft right here. Let that bearing rod nice and smooth on there. There we go. Doesn't need to be a lot. And now we can seat our unit back on here. And we'll push it down. There we go, it is now seated. And we'll take our Allen key and we'll put it everything back down tight. I snug all four up first and then tighten them down. In case you're wondering. So now they're all snug. And then I just go back and tight, tight, tight. Tight. And now we have our extruder unit put back together. And we can continue assembly. This is the hardened gear set right here. And it's definitely put it put in some filament I'm not gonna lie but it's still a solid unit and I'll keep it and I'll just mark it a solid hardened gear and if I ever need it or something in an emergency I'll have it available to go all right so let's get you all back in a position here here there we go and now we have our unit back and we can reseat our extruder unit and we'll go ahead and move it PTF tube out of the way. And go ahead and set it in there. I knew I would get grease on me. Then we'll take our screws for this and we will secure this unit. And again, I just generally, I get them in a couple threads started and I get them all in. And when you're doing this, if you get grease on your gloves, be sure not to touch your build plate. And you'll be scrubbing your build plate for an hour. All right. Got that one. Get the third one in there. And we 
can tighten them down. Now, if you don't have a hardened gear set in there, I would definitely recommend the hardened gear set. Um, it just opens up so much more filament and carbon fiber and glass fiber filaments, they will eat the non-hardened gears super fast. So now that they're all snug, we'll go ahead and we'll give it a quarter turn tight. Quarter turn tight. Quarter turn tight. We'll go ahead and we'll stick our cutting blade assembly back up in there. Be sure you feed it properly. There's a little slot and you will see it plain as day. Be sure that you don't do that and drop your cutting blade. Like I just did. And it almost goes in there by itself and then you're gonna have to hold it and you have to seat, seat this uh, black allen screw back in there to keep it from popping out All right. and then that locks that into place then we'll go ahead and we'll reconnect our little connector then we'll come in here we've locked our PFT tubing in we got our extruder power connector hooked on and now we'll go ahead and put this back on even though we didn't have to take it off now I will say if you I have a Panda Revo head on there and I absolutely love that nozzle um, a lot more flow out of it uh, if you choose to want to use that nozzle I would strongly suggest uh, doing the obsidian or whatever they want to call it I don't know I feel like every hot end on a 3d printer is like watching the movie the core it's like ultimatium titanium some kind of something and, um, but the nozzles, you know, don't cheap out on a good, I mean, buy a good nozzle, especially if you're using abrasive filaments. And then I give my hot end a good, good tightening down there. And we'll bring it around a little bit, hopefully. And then we'll feed our cables up through this little connector again. One thing about the Revo hot end is the, the cables are super stiff. So it takes a little finagling to get them in there. Just kind of FYI. And I'm going to do my bit. Oh, there's no way I'll probably. They're kind of a pain. you get in there and when you are doing this I'd strongly recommend turning the machine power off so you don't damage anything and now we have that in there then we'll go ahead and we'll hook our cooling fan back up and we'll go ahead front and we'll clear out all the errors about everything and we'll ignore all and close and then what I like to do just to verify everything is working just come up to the display
and sometimes I have to move the camera a minute. I'll bring you all back in just a minute. Sometimes it's hard to get the dang uh, connector in there. The uh, hot the connectors on this printer are lackluster at best. I'll say that. And we'll turn it on. Sorry, bring you all back here. I'm waiting for my big tree tech uh, panda touch to actually come on. There's a little MOSFET board on there that they updated and I really need to get one but I just haven't. So now when it comes on it'll flicker a few times and I take it off for a minute and put it on and it'll go back to working. I'm not real sure why. All right, so now our big tree tech is up and we're waiting for it to connect to the Wi-Fi. We are connecting to the printer. It is connected to the printer now. Woohoo. Now what I like to do, just wipe off this build plate for a minute here. And uh, what I'm gonna do is go into my settings and I wanna go into I'm in the wrong set of settings here. So now that I've messed with all that, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over to my computer and I'm gonna run a calibration on it. by pulling up Bamboo Labs, or Bamboo Studio, momentarily. All right, and now that we have all that in there, just gonna go ahead and calibrate it. We've started the calibration process. I'm going to bring you off the stand here momentarily before we end this particular video. So as you can see I have the uh, voxel unit over there. Oh wait let me get you all zoomed out here a little bit. There we go. So my printer's a little modified. I've got the Panda Touch on there. I love that. It just brings this thing to life, especially with the latest update. I also have the um, Voxel HEPA filter and charcoal filter in the bottom. And those wires actually go to the fan and it'll pull that through and suck the ABS fumes down. It works real well. I've got my little curve mount here clean out the bottom easier. I've got end cap or bolt cap covers to keep stuff from going down into there. Really nice printer. I've got it set up pretty well. Very pleased with it. But in any event, that is how you replace the extruder gears and the P1S with the Panda Claw. And the next video we'll do the A1 Mini. Thanks for watching. Bye.